short without the wires so for safety's sake given this is the first outing of the aircraft we decided to operate it from Cambridge here it is coming down nice and slowly there's a lot of aerodynamic braking on that aircraft there we go it's quite an exciting aircraft to fly down brings it round again showing off that red belly This was rescued from Flambetta, basically off the dump, it sold for scrap. She, she was in a remarkable condition when she was brought over from the car. Designed as a successor to the Tiger Moth, or to have it in Canada, first flight being in 1946. <coughs> and the 700 aircraft were built for the Royal Air Force at Hatfield and Chester in three years running from the moment they started the production line. Up on 45 degree half roll. Complete roll. Some nice, gentle aircraft to do aerobatics in, sort of thing that I approve of thoroughly. We're going to see more of that gentle and very polished aerobatics later with uh, Anna Walker and the Jungmeister. Flying the Venom is Paul Morris, who's, he tells me of the colour scheme when he can't see it from inside. I have to say he's flown me around in a Yak-52. Aircraft, the Vampire, of course, a wartime design. Venom being a re-winged Vampire with a more aerodynamic sweep. It's quite what it was like to be in there thrown around. Flying off to somewhere else, she's giving us a wave, yep. So, herzlichen Glückwunsch für die herrwürdige Dame, as you say. Two P-40s to get airborne.
you may also join the Air Training Corps, get involved in things like that. And that was very, very polished formation of aerobatics and gliders. Well now, photographers at the ready. B-17 from your left with two P-40s. The Italians had attempted to invade Greece. The Navy had lost over 2,000 dead. They lost three cruisers, six destroyers, 13 other ships were also badly damaged, including two battleships and the only aircraft carrier then in the Mediterranean fleet. The Germans had lost 4,000 men killed, about half as many as we did. The Royal Air Force Squadron, to which we welcome here today, some of the veterans of 33 Squadron, fought to the very end with sparse equipment available. We salute those who fought here in the defence of Crete. And I am joined at this point by one of those very men himself, John Cleary. He was out in Crete, 1941, with 33 Squadron. You talked about you came out of Greece with a Blenheim. Yeah. And there is I a did. Blenheim. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. It's a lot more. We got, a, I, I think at any one time we had six, but we would lose them as fast as they could get reinforcements and from... they were what, uh, hurricanes or...? Hurricanes, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was uh, the gladiators, one, one, two squadron were at uh, Heraklion, the other side of the uh, Kenia, Bay. So, that morning, what happened? What, what was the first thing you realised that you were actually being invaded? Well, what happened uh, is we reached a situation where... <coughs> Were you out in that position? Mm, no, I I was out around the back of the, the hill 107, but as I say, we left and we went down towards uh, Kenia and Sudamai. This was on the Sunday, the 18th. Uh, Germans uh, landed on Tuesday, the 20th. We went down to uh, Sudamay, and there that evening, on the Sunday evening, probably left. Three spitfires. In its era, in terms of manoeuvrability, rate of climb, service ceiling and steadiness as a gun platform, the Venom was an outstanding fighter. Venom running in from the right.
were reformed at Odium. Where they've operated the Westland Puma. Where they still are operating the Western Puma. One of the Pumas is sitting patiently hovering out to the right. <laughs> Also in reconnaissance and casualty evacuation, and VIP transport. And out on the field, just pass. Well, you can go out as two sticks, two drops of parachutists. They'll be having a quick whiff of oxygen at the moment, just a quick little puff. track away from each other tells me they probably went at about six or eight thousand. It is possible for them to talk to each other, they can shout to each other. One down below leading, they say when he's going to turn left or right. And they can add messages up and down, they can certainly hear us. Hercules, probably based, well definitely based down at Lynham. Well, they've got that very pretty stack. Beginning of the season. Notice from the drop zone, which is still way to our right. They're still keeping nicely upwind. These parachutes can track forward at quite a decent speed. 20 knots, 20... And there, the pennant of the Royal Air Force. What's the flare for? Caps on, dressing to the right. To attention. As in and from your left, the aircraft that they drop from, the return of the Hercules, to attention. The leader marches forward and takes the sword. The Swordfish. Incredible machine. End was still in service. In 1940, the previous year, it sunk the Italian fleet at Taranto thereby giving the Japanese the idea for Pearl Harbor.
Well, a magnificent display by the Harrier. Zealand Air Force colour scheme and by the old flying machine company Includes the flying display part of the first display here at Duxford. The museum is still open, open till late this evening. So no need to rush away because you already get stuck in the traffic. So take the opportunity to maybe get some photographs of some of the aircraft in the static without the huge numbers of people around the aircraft. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Stratton Ritchie and I wish you a very good evening. Thank you, Stratton. Thank you very much everybody ladies and gentlemen and uh, we hope to see you here again for the magnificent Flying Legends air display. Have a nice evening for flying now. So, uh, wings and uh, get yourself a flight or we'll see the airfield as the display pilot saw it this afternoon. In fact one of the aircraft actually took part in the display. So there you go. A bargain. Put yourself in for a flight and then take it off. One of the few, there you go.